Hello and welcome to my TCC 2021 talk uh, about fully succinct verifiable delegation from constant size assumptions. I am Alonso Gonzalez and this is joint work with Alexandro Zagarakis. Um, a delegation scheme, what is a delegation scheme? Uh, in a delegation scheme, a computationally constrained verifier would like to delegate some heavy but still polynomial time computation which in this case we represent by some circuit C and the, the, the statement the verifier would like to check is whether C evaluated on, on X outputs Y. Um, so the verifier delegates this computation to a more powerful but still polynomial time prover which evaluates the circuit but also produce, produces some proof pi which is sent to the verifier. Okay, so we are just considering one message. This could be interactive also, but in this case, it's just one message. Okay, um, the verifier then uh, checks the proof if it's valid or not, and of course, checking the proof should take less time than just evaluating the circuit. Okay, so otherwise, the verifier just evaluate the circuit. No. Um, okay, so a related notion is that of. Uh, an argument of knowledge for MP, for example, because in this case it's, it's an argument of knowledge uh, in P. No, so this is a P, P statement. So uh, a snark is also a delegation scheme, but the statement is more general. No, so the, the, there is no X, and the prover shows that it knows some X that makes the circuit output Y. Uh, I said that because. In order to, to, to see what is uh, available in the literature, we also need to consider SNARKs. So, for example, we can start with Group 16, which is kind of optimal in some sense and very attractive in practice because the size of the proof is just a constant number of group elements and the verification time is just uh, a constant number of pairing evaluations. Okay, And this is what we call in this work fully succinct. Okay, so. Then the expressivity, so you can show the you can show the validity of any NP statement, but this comes at a price if you want to have succinct uh, verification and proof size and such a large amount of expressivity, you need to rely on non-falsifiable assumptions. That is an assumption for which it is not uh, you cannot efficiently check if an adversary breaks the assumption or not. So the, in fact, there are impossibility results, which says that any snark for MP, so any argument for MP, which is also succinct, needs to be based on non-falsifiable assumptions. And indeed, this is the case of group 16, which is proven sound uh, in the generic group model or the algebraic group model. So and in this work, we want to move below this axis. No, this axis, we want to go below this plane here and use falsifiable assumptions. Okay, so <clears throat> um, with falsifiable assumptions, there's the work of Kalai Panjang at stock 19, which is based on the work of Panet and Rotblum at TCC 17. They... Uh, they have a, a delegation scheme, so so since they so they base their scheme on falsifiable assumptions. So here is a Q assumption. So it's an assumption that grows with the size of the computation. Um, but so so in order to do so to to be based on falsifiable assumptions, you cannot have the, uh, an argument for MP, but just for P. So we have delegation scheme, no. But the good thing is that the the size of the proof is succinct, so it's shorter. Evaluating the so it's a, a real delegation scheme. Evaluating the proof and the proof size is linear in the size of the circuit, but it still is larger than than growth sixteen. And in this world, we would like to have something like growth sixteen, and uh, based on even better assumption because this assumption grows with the um, with the size of the circuit. No, so uh, we also put here Panet Rotblum because it's very related, but the assumption is worse, so it's based on multilinear maps and obfuscation. Okay, so we want to some we want to have something here, and the assumption is even better than a Q assumption, so our order one assumption, which is DDH, the lean. Um so a good candidate for for for, for 
for something like that is what is known as a quasi-adaptive non-interactive zero knowledge proof well introduced by Jutland Roy and but the the most efficient instantiations were proposed by other researchers or made a long line research of work where they construct very short proofs so comparable to 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 the proofs of Croc 16 and also the verification time is also uh, constant time so it's a, a, a constant number of pairing evaluations and the proof size is a constant number of group element on the other hand the assumption is very good so it's ddh or the lean or um, so constant size assumptions but the problem is expressivity expressivity is just for very simple languages so linear languages and some uh, restricted non-linear languages okay so what we're going to do now is to start from QNUSIC and using other techniques like the one of Kalaip and Yang, Panet Rotblum, we are going to extend the expressivity of QNUSIC in order to get to P. Okay, so let's see what let's see how um, we construct this delegation scheme. So as we said before, we start from QNUSIC. This is going to be our brick now, so our starting point because they have what we want. They have good proof size, it's just around one group element or a constant number of group element, and it's based on, on good assumptions. So on the other hand, we are going to use the techniques of Palet Rotblum and Kalei Pan Yang, so what they call quasi arguments in Kalei Pan Yang. So but the, the important thing is that they have what is called as a non signaling extraction. And they use what they show is that with these quasi arguments and using this non signaling extraction, you can get delegation for bounded width circuit. But as we see before, um, so, but they also extend their work for, for, for managing other circuits. But the problem is that the proof is not fully succinct. So it's not a constant number of group elements. Then the assumption is not constant size. So what we do is we construct new of this quasi argument, but based on QNUSIC, so that they also inherit the short proof size and the good assumption. So we manage to get fully succinct delegation or bounded with circuit from the lean. In order to extend these uh, techniques to to um, to any circuit, no, we use the work our work at Asia Grid nineteen, <coughs> which is a delegation for bounded depth circuit. No, this is bounded width. It's growth. So if you take any circuit, grows with the width, and this one, the size of the proof and the verification time grows with the depth. So we we mix the two things and we get some proof which don't grow with the grid so it doesn't grow with the width nor with the depth no so it's and it's fully succinct uh, <coughs> and based just on the lean so the, the only thing that we need to solve here in this work is that this is based on q assumptions and uh, since we want to base just on constant size assumptions, so we need to extend these techniques in order to be based on, on constant size assumptions, so in this case on SXDH. Okay, so let's start to, let's see um, in more detail these ingredients. So let's start with these quasi arguments of knowledge of Kalei Pan Yang and with no signaling extraction. So um, a quasi argument of knowledge is a relax relaxation of an argument of knowledge because if since we also want succinctness, an argument of knowledge turns out to be something very hard to construct if we also want succinctness. No, and because of the following reasons. So an argument of knowledge gives the following soundness guarantee, so what is known as knowledge soundness. So for any adversary breaking soundness, there is an extractor uh, which proceeds as follows. So it generates some some parameters, global parameters, public parameters. And then simulates the adversary on input these parameters and the random coils until this adversary output a statement and a proof. And if this proof is, if, is, is, if the proof is valid, the extractor should also output a witness for the statement. Okay? And here's the problem. So the proof size is quite short, while the witness in general is much more larger. 
no? And the problem is how to extract this amount of information from this very short amount of information. And the answer is that the only way to do that is by using um, non-falsifiable assumption as being shown by Gentry and Quich. Um, <clears throat> so since we want to avoid non-falsifiable assumptions, we cannot use an argument of knowledge and we are restricted to use weaker notions, which is the case of a quasi-argument of knowledge, which are parameterized by some parameter, the locality parameter, which is some integer k much shorter than the size of the witness. Okay, and we are also going to build an extractor, but it's a little different. It receives as input a subset of the positions in the witness. Okay, and of course, this subset is of size shorter than the locality parameter. And the, the extractor, which is similarly as before, it simulates the adversary. The adversary outputs a statement and a proof. And if the proof is valid, we are not going to extract the whole witness, which is very hard but just a small witness, uh, which is um, called the local witness, no? So it's the witness for, basically for the position defined by S. And this witness needs to be locally sound. What is locally sound? Well, it depends on the language. For example, let's take the language of uh, satisfying, um, sorry, um, the language of formulas, Boolean formulas, satisfying Boolean formulas which are uh, the AND of many clauses, and this, each of these clauses now is the OR of many variables. And now, so a f formula is in the language if there is a satisfying assignment. So this is the witness now is a satisfying assignment for the formula. It gives value to the variables. But now our extractor uh, extract, of course, a local witness, no, a local assignment. So it's an assignment that gives value to just a number or a limited number of variables. So what does it mean? Our previous question on the previous slide was, what does it mean for the local witness, the local assignment in this case, to be locally sound? Okay, so we're going to define a local formula. And this local formula is going to contain just the clauses for which all the, all the variables belongs to this set, okay? And now the local witness is going to be locally sound if the local formula uh, is valid, no? Many locals. Um, okay, but in this was the notion of local soundness used by Kalai Panjang, uh, but we are going to use Another, so this were the language used by Kalai Panjang, so they use formulas, and we are going to use another kind of language so our statements are going to be commitments and our witness opening to this commitment, no? And the, the statement is going to be true if there is some opening for this commitment and this opening satisfies some linear relation, okay? So it's in the image of this matrix M. And the local extractor is going to open a local opening, so a, a small part here of the, of the commitment, so a local... A local opening for the commitment and this local opening needs to satisfy the corresponding equations no so if the local commitment appears here then it needs to satisfy the matrix so the matrix the sub matrix of the rows of the respective rows no and we also consider another language the language of Hadamard relations which is also the statements are commitment now three commitments and um, the statement is going to be true if there is an, an opening for the commitments for each of the commitments, and this uh, opening satisfy this Hadamard, rela Hadamard relation. No? So this is the entry-wise multiplication. So it's saying that the first entry is equal to the multiplication of the two. And now the local extractor is going to extract a small part of the witness, and this small parts of the witness here, here, and here need to satisfy the corresponding relations. No? Okay, so as we say before, this quasi-argument also have what was called uh, what is uh, a known signaling extraction and it's defined as follows. So we consider two experiments, one on the left and the other in the right, and we're going to take two different sets. Now a larger set, shorter than the locality parameter, and a subset of the set. In the first experiment we're going to run the extractor, the local extractor, which is going to output some local witness with respect to the set S, but since 
S prime is containing S, so all the position in S prime are in S. We are going to restrict the extracted witness to the smaller set. And in the other experiment, we are going to extract a shorter witness. And the condition needs uh, requires that the two distributions are computationally indistinguishable. Okay, so let's see now how to use uh, node scene and extraction, so quasi arguments for building delegation for bounded depth circuits. So this is what was shown by Panet Rodblum and Kalai Panjang. Um, so we are going to take a circuit of depth D and with S. And we are going to divide this circuit in all the levels, no? so depending on the distance from the inputs. Okay, so we are going to have d levels where d is the depth, depth the multiplicative depth of the circuit. And each of the levels is going to look as follows. So the inputs of the level are going to be the output of the previous level. Then all these squares are going to pass through a linear transformation. And if you think of a Boolean circuit, this linear transformation is some wires. Now this wire goes here and also goes here. This other wire goes here. And in general, for an arithmetic circuit, you can also take linear combination of the language of the wires. No? So you can have two wires and multiply by some constant and so on. Okay, but at the output, we're going to have a set of left wires and a set of right wires. And these left and right wires are going to be the inputs to multiplication gates. And now the output of the level is going to be the Hadamard product, so the entry-wise product of um, the left wires and the right wires. No? So basically what we have here is kind of the language that is saw before. No? The, here we have the linear transformation and here we have the Hadamard relation. Okay, so how to um, build a delegation scheme? For bonded with the circuit. So now we are going to commit to all the left wires, but we are going to start from the leftmost. No, first we are going to take the, the one leftmost here. So we are going to pass through this wire, but not this one. And then the the other wires, no, the, the ones that go to the right. Now we start here and then we go through here and so on until we get um S commitment, S shrinking commitments, no? So this is in the end grows with the width. So that's why it's for the, so this is part of the proof and then the proof grows with the width of the circuit and it's just succinct for bounded depth circuit. And then we do the same for the, the right wires and the output wires. And importantly, we add uh, many Q arguments for the linear Hadamard relation, no? So one for, for for the leftmost and another for the other ones and so on. So we have also S quasi argument for the linear Hadamard relation. Now, how to see that this is sound, that indeed Y needs to be the right evaluation of the circuit on input X. So let's start, we're going to, to, to extract the, use the local extraction to extract the commitments at many levels, no? So we can extract here and at this level here. So we're going to start by extracting the first level. Okay, so we extract A11, A21, and so on, no? So, and by local soundness, it needs to hold that the left and right wires are the right linear transformation of the inputs, no? So they are consistent in some sense with the input. They are the right, the honest evaluation of the input. And the same for C1, no? Because C1 is the Hadamard product of these two, and then is the honest evaluation of a... Uh, of the circuit on input X, no? Now we are going to change the extraction set. Now we have a smaller, so this set is contained here. And then if this is consistent with X, then also this needs to be consistent with X. Why? Because being consistent, so being the right evaluation is something that is efficiently, uh, you can check it efficiently because, well, it's just evaluating a circuit, no? Then, so these two need to be computational and distinguishable. This also needs to be the honest evaluation. No, because otherwise you can distinguish the two experiments and break no signaling. So we can change again the destruction sent. I go a little below, so we are taking just the 
extracting the outputs of the first level and the the in, well not the input but the, the left and right wires of the next level and for the same reason C1 needs to also be consistent with the input and now by local soundness we know that A2 and B2 are the right linear transformation of the output of the previous level and we can continue until we get till the end and so our invariant is whatever we extract is consistent with the input and in particular the output needs to be consistent with the input and then this is sound very nice, so um, <coughs> quasi-argument of knowledge is what we need for building delegation. Okay, but as we saw, say before, so Kalai Panjang uh, already build quasi-arguments, but the argument were not fully succinct and were not based on constants as assumptions. So we are going to base these quasi-argument on QNU-seq. So what is a QNU-seq? So for now, we are just going to see a QNU-seq for linear spaces. Okay, so in a QNU-seq argument, we have a vector of group elements. So we have a, a bilinear group, okay? So, uh, so groups provided with a pairing. And we want to show that this vector belongs to the image of some matrix, no? So the similar, the same language is what, uh, what is what is proven with a hash proof system. No, this tool introduced by Kramer and Shoup for showing CCA2 security and have many other applications. And the good thing is that the proofs are very short. So, are very short and they are based on very good assumptions. So, not even an assumption, it's statistically sound. But the problem is that they are designated verifiers. So, there is a secret key for uh, checking uh, if a proof is false or not. So, it's a valid or not. So, and uh, so the proofs are very short. There is a secret key here, and in order to enable the prover to compute the proofs, we publish some public key, which is the, the key times the, the, the matrix, which is also called the, the, the projective, projective key. And now the, verify, the prover can compute proofs for a statement in the language. And if the statement is not in the language, so you take a vector in the, outside the image of M, it turns out that this public key only reveals, reveals key through M and the rest of the key is statistically hidden. Okay, so then you cannot, with high probability, with, of, with very high probability, you cannot produce proof for vectors which are outside the image of M. Very good. Very good assumption. Nice proof. Nice proof size. So what we want, but the problem is the uh, designated verifier thing. No? So what was done with QNU-seq is to take this hash proof system and provide uh, public verifiability by adding pairing. So this don't require any pairing and QNU-seq require a pairing but have public verifiability. And they achieve that by uh, also providing some, you can think of this as a commitment key and this value which is some, um, <coughs> some uh, commitment to the secret key. Now, and now the idea is that you can publish the secret key, but, st but still uh, the prover or the adversary don't know the secret key. And using the pairing, you can check basically the same equation. No, it's just multiplied by A here, but it's the same equation as before. So here the verification equation with the secret key is K times X, and here is similar, no, but we have K here. Okay, so the proof size is still good. It's just a constant number of group elements. The verification equation, the verification time requires the evaluation, evaluating a constant number of pairings. And now the, the this assumption under which you prove soundness is not, a, so it's not, you don't have a statistical soundness, but uh, just uh, computational soundness because now you need to base soundness on, a, on an assumption, but it's still a very good assumption, some, an assumption which is even weaker than, than DDH. Than, well, depends on DDH, the lean, or any of the assumptions. So a constant assumption. So this is a good building block. Okay, so now we are going to extend this QNSIC argument to, um, to have quasi-arguments, no? so that we can build delegation scheme. So we need to define what is a quasi argument of membership in a linear space. So as we say, so we already defined this language before, 
Uh, so all the statements are going to be commitments and the statement is going to be true if there is there exists an opening for this commitment and this opening lies on the image of this matrix and what we want is to have this local extractor no that extract a local opening for the commitment and we want this uh, local opening to be sound so that means it it belongs to the to the sub matrix of the corresponding rows of M. But before we are going to start with something more simpler, which will just output a local opening regardless of soundness or not. No? So this is some kind of commitment. No? So we have some commitment here which have a local extractor. And indeed this is very similar to what is known as a somewhat statistically binding commitment. And but we also will need to add this nodes in any extraction. So we start with uh, with the commitment we introduced at Asia Clip 15 with Alejandro Ivan and Carla Raffles, uh, which were like one so somewhere statistically binding for one coordinate. And this means that um, given the commitment, there is some coordinate that is uh, completely defined. No? So, there is only one opening for at that coordinate, and they achieve that by defining the commitment key as a matrix of just so the, the output so the commitments are two group elements, and they have as many rows as um, as the 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 element so the, the vectors you want to commit to. This is some kind of generalization of Pedersen commitments. Huh? But the good thing is that you can also sample it in a computational indistinguishable fashion the, the commitment key such that one of the rows is linearly independent from the other. And that means that the corresponding position is unique, unique, uniquely defined by C. Okay. Um, okay, so starting from this one SSB, we show that they are also have no seed and extractor. So because there is a way of a very trivial way of extracting from C computing the, the corresponding uh, openings, which is so from G you can construct a matrix T such that T times G is equal to zero 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 so on one in the in the linear independent column and zero 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 zero. And then this implies that T times the commitment is equal to x sub i okay so um, ssb commitments are extractable and the extractor can be shown to be that is also it's very easy this that to show that is non-signaling and by just stacking many of them so k of them you can build k uh, non-signaling ssb commitment with locality parameter k which is what we need Okay, we also show something stronger, so go directly from K SSB, which are shorter than, than so basically, so in the end we show this stronger relation that K SSB are also no signaling, uh, the proof is more complex, but the resulting commitment is shorter, okay. Now we have the first part that we wanted, and now we need to show that the... <coughs> the extracted commitment belongs to the image of the corresponding matrix, no? So in order to do so, we are going to add a proof. And the proof will be that C belongs to the image of G times M, okay? Because C have that, that form, no? So the, the committed value needs to be in the image of M, and then C is in the image of the if it's on the image of G times M. But now what we want is, so the adversary is going to provide some proof that shows that C is in the image, but we want to show that the local opening belongs to the image of the matrix, no? And we can we, we are going to see that this is possible by using the, um, the, the linear properties of the QNUC proof. So, what we want to show is um, we want to produce a proof for ex excess and so we are given the public the projected project 
active key, the public key for showing membership in the image of MS, which is some some secret key K, K dar in this case, and we want to produce a statement and a proof for this statement. No, so it's K, K dar times times uh, the matrix times the witness. Okay, so we are going to define uh, another key. So we are going to run our adversary for the quasi argument. So we're going to, to then we need to, to define the, the CRS. So we're going to define another key which is related to this key which we don't know. So we are going to implicitly define this key as uh, the, the the secret key we want. This is the trapdoor for the for the for the SSB commitment and some random random key. Okay. And now pi, which is output by the adversary, is going to be the so it's correct, so it's going to be k times c. And it turns out that this is almost what we want, but plus this value. And since we sampled this value, we can recover the original, so the proof for excess. So this is here is excess. So we can obtain excess using the trapdoor. And we have also a proof for excess, and it means that excess need to belong to the to the language okay so then what we can also do is extend this QNE seek to some simpler quadratic language and have what we want uh, with a quasi argument of membership in inner space well and also for simple simple well, for the Hadamard relation which you can see in the full paper we can just build delegation for bounded depth circuit. So we also need to build uh, we also need to build delegation for bounded depth circuit, which is our work at Asia Crip 19. We can also look that as width compression. No? So what we did before is uh, depth compression. No, we take a so our proof, final proof don't depend depends on the width, but so depends on the width, but it doesn't depend on the depth. Now we are going to, to do the other the other thing also um, with compression. So we are going to build delegation for bounded depth circuit, which are these objects like this very short circuit. So in this case, it's just one level. Um, we are so we are going to use the technique of our techniques at Asia Crypt nineteen, where we chose a statement of the following form. So we take the inputs and the output of this short circuit, and we commit. To this input with short commitments and the statement we show about the opening is the following so if you know an opening of the input commitment then you should also know an opening for the output commitment and this opening need to satisfy some relation in this case is the the function of that the, 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 the this short circuit applies to the input <clears throat> so if we take uh, for example linear relations um, and rewrite the commitments as matrix multiplication, for example, with Pedersen commitment, this is the case. We know that our input commitment, we know an, an, an opening for this commitment, and then the, the output commitment needs to open to the right linear transformation of the input. This uh, implies that C and D belongs to the image of this matrix. But it's not hard to see that the other way around is not true. So it's not necessarily true. And in our work at HL19, we introduce what is called an argument of knowledge transfer, which is basically that. So here you're, you have knowledge for, for C and then it's transferred to D. And uh, we show that um, using a QNE seek argument of membership in this matrix, but also a computational assumption over M, which is in, in fact a, a, a mill assumption, so it's just the DDH or XDH, you can show that you have this argument of knowledge transfer, no? And then you can build delegation for uh, bounded depth circuits, no? Because now you need to compute all the commitments to the input and the output of each level and show this argument of knowledge transfer, no? But in, in this case, we need to add this no signaling property to the arg to this argument of knowledge transfer. And we, we achieve that, that by computing commitments to commitments, so computing some non-signaling commitment and to many 
of this argument of knowledge transfer, no? that we have the input commitment, the, the output commitment, and then the, with the output commitment is in the input commitment for the next level, and so on. No? Um, so the idea now is that our extractor extracts a local opening for this commitment, and the hypothesis is that we know an opening for this local commitment, and then the the output commitment needs to open to the right transformation of um, the input. No, but the thing now is that we can extract the no signal commitment at many levels, and for each levels, you need to have this that this statement is true. And now finally, uh, let's see how to do with and depth compression. No, and then we have fully succinct proof for any circuit. We start with our circuit. And we commit to the left, right um, output wires for each level. No, for this, for this level, we compute to all the left wires with these commitments for the first level, and the same for the right wires here, and the same for the output wires here, and the same for every level. No, so here we have a um, so here we have D commitments. And now we apply depth compression, so we compute this no signaling commitment. And we take all these commitments and are shrink into just one short commitment. The same for the right wires here and the same for the output wires. And we have a no signaling argument of knowledge transfer. And um, well, it is going to have the following guarantee. So we can open now this commitment at many levels. No? This is constant size. No? So if, uh, the arguments are just the, is in the end the, the, the QNC proof, which is just a constant number of group elements. And we can locally open in these commitments, for example, to the first level. And by local soundness, we know that, the, so we can extract these three guys. And by local soundness, we know that these guys are the right linear transformation of the input. And this guy is the Hadamard product of the opening of these guys. And uh, and so on. No, we can change now. Not extract these uh, these two guys, but these two guys and this guy. And these guys are going to be the right uh, linear transformation of the output of the opening of this guy. And so on until we show that the output is consistent with the input, and then is the right evaluation of the input. And voila. So let's summarize what we did. So we constructed fully succinct, so a constant number of group elements, an ar argument of knowledge for P, in particular for a dimetic circuit over some large field. No? So the, the field that we use is, so we use uh, set Q, and Q is the size of the group, no? the somber linear group. Then, uh, importantly, we, pro we can prove soundness from static assumptions, so from the decision and linear assumption. We haven't talked about this because this is uh, related to the Hadamard arguments. If we want to base the Hadamard arguments in with, uh, or with base the Hadamard argument on static assumptions, we need a large CRS which grows quadratically with the size of the circuit. We get that compression by building Nikas arguments for simple languages, and importantly, they are based on static assumption and they have very short proofs. They are based on um, on this Q QNUC arguments for linear and quadratic languages. And also we use the technique of our techniques at HRK19 for width compression, which were based on Q assumptions, and we base them on static assumptions, but again the cost is a larger uh, reference string. This is for the Hadamard relations, uh, but also this also happens here. So we also here for Hadamard relations have a large reference string. But the... We, an open question that a question that we leave open for the future is that so we can we can stay with the original proof here the, the original construction here which is based on q assumption but has a short series so now the question is that can we do the same for this one so these are this is based on a on a constant size assumption so can we base this on a q assumption and get a shorter series and in the end the idea is to have a snark for p with linear CRS, but based on, on, on Q assumptions. And we leave that as an open question. 
And the last thing we did is to combine these two things in a meaningful way to get uh, to get width and depth compression at the same time and to get full instruction delegation from standard assumption. So thank you very much uh, for your time and this is the end of this talk.